Uh, mm. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. Let me jump in quick with the episode. This is episode 447. <sighs> I compose myself. And the topic today is are you getting attention or are you keeping attention? There's a big difference. And if you're doing the wrong one, you're going to be in trouble. And it's going to really apply to both sides of the conversation, not just women towards men. If it's both women towards men, men towards women, straight towards gay for that matter. I mean, gay, excuse me, gay towards gay. Let me be clear. But let me jump into that in a moment. Let me introduce myself first. Thanks for joining me and being the broadcast. I appreciate you being here. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Some of my works towards the women, but some of my talks are for both. In fact, yesterday's talk, 446, was about the Me Too conversation and how men can step up. And if you haven't seen that broadcast, please go back and watch it. It might just change your interaction in the post-Me Too time frame. Anyway, today's topic, and by the way, preface slightly. Every day I do a talk called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. This is episode number 447. And the topic today is, do you... I, do you attract attention? Do you get attention? Or do you keep attention? And I'm already mem- misremembering the title. I'll explain as we go along. You'll, you'll get the point. And first of all, um, thanks and props to my friend Gina Hendricks, who is a um, matchmaker relationship coach in the local neighborhood, actually in Venice, because she was posting about this yesterday, and I commented on that. And it really became clear I want to talk about this to the world at large through my Facebook Live, to talk about this idea about Attracting attention, getting attention versus keeping attention. Um, I think the word was attention I used. I put these titles up and then I forget once I get on camera. So, thanks for joining me. Let's get into this topic and have some fun, shall we? Living in LA <laughs> provides its own um, conundrum, this degree of, of, of um, attention seeking. It may not be true in every town on the planet, but certainly in this area, Los Angeles, there's a lot of desire to get attention. And when it comes to relationship conversation, because I want to bring that up as a primary focus before we start going any deeper, is that in the relationship conversation, a lot of people are attracted by what they see right at the beginning, without any any, um, patience to see what else is there. And in Los Angeles in particular, hi Justina, nice to see you, thanks for being in my broadcast. Um, And say this, LA is very surface driven, I'll be polite that way. As in many people who live in this town, and I've lived here for over 30 years, so I've watched a lot of the people who come through this place, a lot of the, well, I guess the Hollywood type climate promotes appearance over anything else, over substance. In fact, Ah, there we go. I wonder. Was, I've already. I had. A, I didn't know where I was going to go with. Already know where I'm going. So good. I got. I've got a, a landing strip for this message. <laughs> so, <sighs> gather my thoughts for a second. In this town, there is a massive focus on, like there are other places too, of what is it you bring to the table right up front, the appearance, the first look, that first. Um, attention getter whether it is for the men it might be what sorry men looking at women it may be the sh- the, the, the low cut dress or the high heels or the way she's shaped or the plastic surgery she had or the lips that have been puffed up or whatever it is which is what was the conversation yesterday with my friend Gina on her wall that started this thing in my mind as well so that's one of the things that happens for men attracted to women is by like whoa you know that sort of like wow that was noticeable not necessarily attractive but noticeable and I'll get into that in a moment on the other side, quite often, and this is more traditional archetypes, so ladies and gents, if you're more modern thinking, this may be the other way around, but I just want to make sure you get this scenario. So first of all, men are attracted to the way women look. A lot of women are attracted to the car men drive, men drive or the, the way they appear, how clean up they are, how, how you know, they've got, they got this amazing Ferrari or whatever the car they've got, and they don't go any deeper than that. In fact, an example of that, personally, I watched, is a matchmaker I happened to was work, was looking to work with as a consultation trade had me talk to one of her clients who was very um, <laughs> I'm describing it politely 
he was a player. He had like the 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 the, the he had the the, um, the sweatsuit on that never had any sweat on it. You know, it was like fluorescent green, just like his car. He had a Lamborghini. I remember the Lamborghini definitely lime green Lamborghini. And he was looking for tips and how to pick up pick up women. So I didn't help him because that's not my focus. It's not my intention. It's not my intent. Not my skill set, honestly, because that's not pick up artist is not my teaching. So that's that was one thing. So he was looking to present his image the way that he thinks most women look at men. And in their life for a while, it's been that way. Whereas women are looking at men for like, what car do they drive? How flashy are they? Although the tooth is more often than not. It's about the car value to indicate to the women that he can take care of her financially. And that's such, a, that's such an illusion because so many people are driving cars in this town who don't own them, who haven't got the money to pay for them. They may be leasing them. But the thing is, when the car's gone, they're back where they started. Their money situation is not is not reflective by the car they drive. They have overreached their station, as it were. So that's one part. So in the old model, the old paradigm, there was this appearance first, the attraction or the attention getting first, and nothing behind it. And this is the problem, maybe, way of putting it. It's certainly a missing piece for people in this culture, or I should say in that culture, because the culture is other places like New York and LA and other cities as well. That the people are caught up in this this paradigm where appearance matters more than content, and it's assumptive reasoning that people are, and I'm using people because it's for men and women, not one side or the other, are basing their hopes and dreams on how somebody looks or appears or presents than they are about who they really are, and that, my friends, is a serious trap, unless. You don't care about anything beyond just what it looks like at the beginning. So, for example, there are many women in the Southern California arena and other places too, but Southern California is famous for it, is the plastic surgery. So many women have gone out of their way to adjust their bodies by plastic surgery. I don't mean by health and working out. It's a whole different conversation. To to, um, carve their appearance to be most appealing to a man the way they think it should be. And for many women, unfortunately, they've overdone it. I'm I'm speaking totally from a masculine point of view. Having seen many women like that, I see that a lot. And it's 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 very noticeable. So yes, it gets attention, but it's almost um, what's the analogy I want to use? It's almost too much to handle. Like just going, okay, okay, not interested, and it becomes repellent over time. The problem with that also is for women who attract a man because of the way they look, unless they keep going to plastic surgery and maintaining the look for 20, 30, 40 years, and I've seen people, women in LA who look like that, and it gets uglier and uglier, unfortunately, it doesn't work because they never base their connection with their partner on the essence, the, 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 um, I'm trying to think of the right word to use. Essence is a good word. I'll come back to that in a moment because that actually ties to an old training I went through many years ago, the form versus essence. And I'll get to that in a moment too. So, rewind slightly. For the men, they have this, or should I say women looking at men, they want a man that's got security and stability. Now, in this culture, especially the last, well, since 2008, particularly when the crash happened, a lot of men, their solidity and security and structure around money and, and ability to be able to provide for some of them, it went away completely. And there were quite a lot of people who went through divorces and suicides after that because they had based their life upon that appearance. And that, frankly, is very upsetting, but it's also an, a, another symptom of the issue or the, the, the disease in a way, is that people are caught up, especially, and again, this is talking about specifically this part of the world, but it's true in, in, in um, segments of, the, of parts of the world everywhere. Particularly in this town, people are tied up in their appearance and their looks and what gets attention versus how to prolong connection after they got attention. Because the thing is, if you just want to get laid, go ahead and do it. I can't coach you any more than that. You've got what you need. Go forth and do it. But if you want a healthy relationship, and if you watch my broadcasts, I suspect you do want healthy relationships. The true work is, is to get to know what's behind that presentation. So yes, if they may have a nice car or the woman's got great looks because of plastic surgery, I'm not saying you should not go out with them, but see if there's something behind them. Now, to be really transparent, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of people have paid for surgery or 
I wouldn't say just the car, but property, use property as a term, to sub, um, sublimate other issues. So those um, outward appearances are a cover-up for something inside that's not resolved. That's a whole other conversation about therapy and, and resolving it and healing it up. So some of those people are worth getting to know because even though they have the appearance of having too much pizzazz but no content, there might be some value in there, some, some as I call it, essence. So let me just bring that piece on the table because I talked about it as a training I went through years and years ago. This is back in 86. We did, we did a, a four-day exercise about learning the difference between form versus essence. And it was a, it, that was the terminology, so I'll try to break it down a bit more. We were basically looking at, we had, let me explain this model because this can see if it fits into this conversation. We as um, participants in this, in this training, it was a, a month-long training, had the opportunity both as participants but then also as what we call the committee to present a message, a, actually it was, it was present a word and we had to use a certain sort of structure we were working with, which is the people and some other things. But the thing was, is that people who were the committee had to see the essence of what we were doing, not the form. So we couldn't spell out the word or the information. We had to present an expression of it that wasn't acting it out. It was about how do we express it in an essential format. And what it meant to us was, as speakers and presenters, because that was what the training was, a speaker and presenter training. Way back in 86, I was learning how to present. My God. <laughs> Flashbacks. But the thing was, is what we were learning was how to be in a, in, a present, in a place of essence, a place of beingness that people could feel versus waving, expressing to get their attention and they go, yeah, okay, we get the message. It doesn't connect. And so in that context of about being speaker presenter training, we were learning how to be able to, to present ourselves to an audience so they would feel and get the message almost without saying a word. How does that relate to what I'm talking about? I'll tell you. So many people are tied up in how they look. And now I'm going to speak from my own experience. If you watch my broadcast, you know on the weekdays I dress up in I have nice shirts. And frankly, a little reason I got those nice shirts is I like looking decent on camera. That's a, just a presence and preference for how I want to present myself. It's not to make you think anything different about me. That's why the weekends are casual. But it's like I want to, it's like I want to dress up to present because it feels more um, important. So just to speak from ownership on that one. And I do have a thing for nice cars, but that's because I have to enjoy them personally. It's not about when I say, you need to like my car. It's more about, no, I love driving nice cars. It's my preference. So in that sense, I've learned in a way to move beyond the, um, the form of sales because at a very young age, I, I was disavowed of that very clearly. So thank you, GC. I think I like the color. Um, <laughs> but I'm not taking it personally because <laughs> I'm not attached to that. So um, <laughs> that was funny. So the key of this teaching, the key of the message I want to give you, and make sure you understand this, is that if you're looking for a truly amazing relationship, your focus, your intention, has to be both to discover who they are about, who they are, what they're about, not necessarily what they present, because I'll come to, I'll come to that cause in a moment. At the same time, you want to be as essence-based, as presence-based, as self-based so that way they get to know who you really are so that's the two sides now I was about to do another caveat in there and if any drop in now many people men more than women I think like to present themselves as something they're not and you just flash in the back of my mind about how narcissists work a lot of narcissists work that way of making things look amazing but the reality is if you really are tuned in and you really do the work deeply You'll know where they're being real and where they're not being real. I'm not going to go then past that too much because that's a whole other conversation. I've done many talks about narcissism and I've worked a lot of clients who are, who are healing from that. But a part of this challenge, part of this opportunity with dealing between getting attention and keeping attention is narcissists like to play both sides and that's one of the challenges. So I'm going to leave that one there because I want to get back to what I was mainly talking about because this is a, that's a different conversation in this, in this context. So getting attention versus keeping attention is absolutely 
a game changer for a relationship. And if you are someone who has been focused on how to get attention by how you look, how you dress, how you present, how you talk, how you appear with everything you have, you may want to consider that maybe you're missing the mark. That maybe what they really want, the other person really wants from you, is your presence and your essence and your expression and your beingness about who you're, what, what you're about, why you're here, what, what drives you. Get clear about what that is. If you don't know what it is, I make it a priority to learn, discover, to know. And frankly, um, if you're not sure what it is, you might want to consider getting coaching. I'll come back to that in a second. At the same time, don't necessarily disavow your appearance and the things you do because, as I said, they're not the, they're not the things that make you, but if you enjoy them, why not? I have nice shirts because it, it makes me feel better for me personally. So if you're someone who, for the ladies, if you happen to wear certain, like, certain, certain heels and certain earrings and certain dresses you wear and certain makeup you wear and it makes you feel good, do that. Yes, it might make you more noticeable, but know that that's the start of the conversation. See, the thing is, in a way, that getting attention is saying, hello, versus let's talk. So getting attention is okay, as long as you follow it up by how you keep attention, how you keep the conversation going, how you keep connection. That's where the real relationship can happen. And for me, a lot of what dating's about, and this is my perspective on dating, is it's a, is a chance to test drive before you get into a relationship. Dating is a chance to explore somebody else, get to know who they are, and also for them to get to know who you are. And at some point in time, you'll know that you feel there's more to explore and it's worth going. And that's when you can move into the keeping attention and being in a relationship. So a lot of ways for me, dating is getting attention. Relationship is about keeping attention. Sort of, kind of, playing with that one. So the coaching I mentioned earlier. Um, I want to carefully say this. I love coaching my clients. I also have a very limited availability for clients because I only work with a few at a time because I need to focus on them. Because of that, um, well, I'm going to put it transparently. I'm, my fees are going up because of the fact I can't work with that many people at a time. So if you want to get coaching and you've been putting on the fence for a long time, this is a good time to take action because my coaching won't change, but the fees will. <laughs> Just to be transparent, so now you know. So if you're interested in finding about coaching, I require that you reach out and have a conversation with me first. So you can't sign up for coaching without talking to me first. I don't just take everybody on, so be clear about this. We have a conversation first where you and I talk for 30 minutes as a gift from me to you. It doesn't cost you anything, but we talk and go deep and see where you are, see where you want to go, and see if we want to work together because it's a two-way street. So if you go to my website or if you go to barryselby.com, barryselby.com forward slash chat, you can sign up for a discovery session there and we can talk and then if that works out we can do about coaching um, you can read about my coaching on my website which is um, you go to barryselby.com forward slash coaching you can read about it there but at the bottom all you can do is sign up for a discovery session you can't sign up for coaching there so there <laughs> but that's my, my invitation to you because that's basically what's going on um, a couple other quick things if you are someone who has been Having challenges with really finding your own true calling, your love, your light, your joy, your celebration, and maybe you've been battered by life and everything else. One of the quickest ways to change that experience inside is to love yourself, as I've mentioned many times before. And a quick reminder, I have available my self-love mirror meditation practice that is really my love letter to you. Um, or love letter and audio tracks. It's two audios and a written um, teaching about self-love that if you really want to go deep and have an amazing transformation, this simple exercise will change your life. And for that, you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love, or one word. I'll put the links in the comments as well. Um, that's about it. A reminder though, that, that frankly, if you are attached to getting attention versus keeping attention, you can have a lot of short-term experiences. And that is simply um, it's the way it is, it's the truth. So, again, as I said at the beginning, 
there's a big difference between getting attention, keeping attention. And if you want a healthy relationship, the priority, your focus, your heart's work has to be keeping attention. And for that, I've given you some clues, some ideas, some suggestions. You know where to find me. And I think that's about it. A uh, quick recap of where you can find my stuff. This is my daily broadcast on Facebook Live initially. That goes on to YouTube and then also goes on to, eventually, on iTunes on my podcast. So for finding those, if you go to my uh, business page on Facebook, if you're watching the replay, you can catch it there, which is barryselby.author. Because my personal page gets a lot of other stuff posted there, so my business page is more centric on the broadcast. You can watch them in replay, and you can put comments in there if you want, and I can respond as well. You can also comment on my YouTube versions when they get put up there, and that's on my channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And finally, they do go onto my YouTube, my excuse me, my iTunes podcast, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe there and download them all and listen to them on your phone when you're driving or when you're running and when you're doing other things, and you can have my voice in your ear. Hey, if that works for you, go for it. So having said that, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. Um, check in with yourself. Where are you more focused? Getting, keeping. That's going to govern your choice in relationships. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.